Praises. All right, we're going to start off with, uh, give me Romans 15 and 4. So, well, let me say this. Um, the last time I, um, we did, I did a class called um, Saving You From Yourself, right? So we understand that in that aspect of the Lord set up leadership to be able to help you. Uh, this class is going to be more so focused on you fixing yourself as well, right? So after the leadership that's set up there to help you, you know, you have to be willing to fix yourself as well. All right, so we're going to go through some things on that, and and, and uh, hopefully, Lord's will, you'll you'll get some from this class. All right, Romans fifteen and four. Romans chapter fifteen verse four. For whatsoever thing were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. So read that one more time for me. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning. The the the, the one of the great things about this Bible is the fact that. It's a guideline for your life already. It's already, it was already, before you was even uh, thinking about repenting, the guideline was already set for you. There was already a way for you to fix yourself. There was already a way for you to have comfort or have hope off what was already written. You got to think about how powerful that is because a lot of us didn't even read our Bible before we repented. And it was already there waiting for you. You understand? Read that again. For whatsoever thing were written aforetime, were written for our learning, uh -huh. that we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. And through patience and comfort of the scripture, right? We get comfort. I know I get comfort, and I, and I pray you all do too. I got comfort from knowing that Christ is a black man, that all the Israelites are so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians, that um, all the prophets in the Bible look like me, right? That the curses that I read about in Deuteronomy 28, prove that I'm a child of God. Because everybody on the street tell you, I'm a child of God. Well, according to the scriptures, I can tell you why I'm a child of God. I won't just say, you, you, you get what I mean? I won't just say I'm a child of God. I can actually prove it. Right? That's, a, that's the comfort. That's the hope that we have. Because now I know I'm not a Negro, or a nigga, or African American, or Afro American, whatever you want to call it. I know now who I am because God had this set up before I even repented. Think about that. All right? Give me, uh, is that it? Give me Proverbs 24 and 16. Proverbs chapter 24, verse 16. Proverbs chapter 24, verse 16. Read. For a just man falleth seven times. Read that again. For a just man falleth seven times. Let's get that just real quick. Let's get the just man. Ezekiel 18. 18 and 5, right? Get that. Let's get a ju what just is, because somebody might be confused on that. Ezekiel 18 and 5. Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 5. But if a man be just and do that which is lawful and right. Hold on, read that again. But if a man be just and do that which is lawful and right. If a man be just and do that which is lawful and right. So a just man is a man that's actually keeping the commandments. Go back to Proverbs 24, verse 16. Proverbs 24, verse 16. Read. For a just man falleth seven times. So that's letting you know in this walk you're going to fall. The just man, he, he's going to fall, right? Meaning he's going to have some, some slip-ups. We all going to have them. The only thing is that you got to make sure that you understand that the trials are coming and you're prepared to fix your, whatever issue you're dealing with. You have to be prepared for that when you come into this truth. No matter what. Read that again. For a just man falleth seven times and rises up again. Uh -huh. But the wicked shall fall into mischief. But the what? But the wicked shall fall into mischief. So the Bible is letting you know as soon as you fall away, right? When you fall and you actually fall away, you were wicked the whole time. The whole time. Why? Because a just man is going to fall. He's going to get corrected. He's going to get up. He's going to keep it moving. He's going to press forward, like it says in Philippians. Not the wicked, though. Not, they're going to actually have excuses as to why they fail. And it's never going to be their own self. The, the finger is never going to be pointed back at them. It's going to be pointed at everybody else, proving they were wicked the whole time. Yep. Go ahead. Yeah, so, let me say something real quick. Hey, so just because it says a just man followed seven times doesn't mean that you have a license to sin. Oh, bring it out. Because a lot of times when we are in the streets teaching, a Christian will use that and say, well, a just man falls seven times, mm -hmm. meaning I have a license to sin. Mm -hmm. 
That's not the case. Let's go to uh, Sirach real quick and get uh, 15 and 20. The book of Sirach, chapter 15, verse 20. He has commanded no man to do wickedly. Uh -huh. Neither has he given any man license to sin. You see that? So just because it says you're going to fall and make mistakes, it doesn't give you the license to sin. So I just wanted to clarify that up. Bring that out. All praise. Go ahead, Amos. You had something? Give me uh, Romans chapter 6, verse 1. Because going back to what Officer Orms just said, the main people that fall back on that is Christians. And they, they try to harp in on the fact that they're under grace. But let's get this preset real quick. Because they, they like to quote Paul, but they don't read these things, what Paul says. Read. Mm -hmm. Romans chapter 6, verse 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? So are you going to just keep saying that I fell short? Are you going to keep just saying, well, a just man follows seven times? For you, in order for you to be just in the first place, Christian, you have to have been keeping the commandments in the first place. You had to have started the race. Read. God forbid. So it says, God forbid. We still got to keep the commandments. So pick yourself back up. Go ahead. Oh, praise. You got something you want? Okay. Um, go to, so read that again. Go back to Proverbs 24, 16. Read that one more time. Read that. The book of Proverbs, chapter 24, verse 16. Mm -hmm. For a just man falleth seven times and rises up again, but the wicked shall fall into mischief. So that main way is, uh, of fixing yourself is understanding you're going to fall. Um, in this walk, the more and more you, you understand that, understand the, 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 what's, at, what's at stake, it's going to make it easier for you to rise up, right, if you're walking in the right spirit. If your thought process is to get better in Christ, then you're not going to fall away. It's impossible. If you're actually trying to follow Christ, right? Give me 2 Corinthians 13 and 5. These, like I said, this is going to be scriptures that, that, that a lot of you know, but you still got to revisit it. The scriptures say faith come by hearing. So sometimes you need to hear these things to help you actually learn to apply and fix yourself. You need to hear these scriptures, right? Read that. 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. Read. Examine yourself, whether ye be in the faith, Hold on, read that again. Examine yourself. Examine yourself. It didn't say point the finger at your leadership. It didn't say examine the officer over you. It says do what? Read it again. Examine yourselves. You have to examine yourself. That's something I can't do for you. That's something that your officer can't do for you. you have, that's something that the deacons, the captain, you have to examine yourself. You have to be honest and open enough with yourself to say, okay, this is where I, I have an issue at. Read the scripture. Examine yourself, whether ye be in the faith. Uh -huh. Prove your own self. Do what? Prove your own self. You got to prove your own self. So everything that you say, you have to understand you're going to be tested on that. However you say you're going to move in this truth, the Lord say, okay. You got to prove that. You got to prove yourself. Prove your own self. Read. Know ye not your own selves? Uh -huh. How that Jesus Christ is in you? Except ye be reprobate. Except ye be reprobate. So Christ is dealing with you. Except ye be reprobate. You'll know that if you're examining yourself. You'll know whether you are the devil or if you're following Christ or not. Go ahead. Yes, you want to say? No, I just want to say it says, Know ye not your own selves because nobody knows you better than yourself. It's impossible. So you know exactly what you're dealing with. You know exactly what you struggle with. So you should be able to uh, go into the scriptures and be able to address that. Yep. Accordingly. Yep. Give me Hebrews 5. Uh, fix it. Especially for the, this scripture, right? Oh, did we finish that? 2 Corinthians 13 and 5? Yes, sir. All right, go to uh, Hebrews 5 real quick. Because I'm going to tell you something, especially people who've been in the truth for a while. Let me show you something. And for those that's new. <laughs> Hebrews 5, we're going to read verse 12. Hebrews chapter 5, <laughs> verse 12. For, for when, for the time ye ought to be teachers... Ye have need that one teach you again, uh -huh. which be the first principles of the oracles of God. So for when you are to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again. Listen, you always have to be willing to humble yourself. Humble yourself and, read, and, and, and learn and just listen. Um, we always hear about the deacons and, uh, and the bishop always saying this. When you're, when you're um, new to this truth or when you've been in just for a couple years, let's say you got five years or whatever, um, or more, you still need to be willing to humble yourself and be taught. Just be quiet. There's nothing that you have to say that the deacon hasn't heard already. 
There's nothing that you have to say that Bishop had. Bishop has 30 plus years in the truth. You got five. <laughs> he want to hear what you got to say? Hey, name the last time that you went to your job. And, 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 and you go you to in the, the spirit, yeah, bro. And, and I was you, thinking the same thing. Yeah, man. And you go to the CEO. Yeah. Um, I know, Jeff Bezos. I, 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 I know you've been running Amazon this way. I know right. I'm, a, I'm a temp. I'm a t- <laughs> I'm not even full. I'm part time. I'm part time. I'm not even full time. But I yet. see something that can <laughs> propel this business to the next level. Right. Right. Man, if you don't go to the multi-billionaire. <laughs> but think about that. Just how how crazy that sounds. People do that all the time. Brothers do that all the time when it comes to upper leadership. You know what I do when I'm around them? I be quiet. I don't have nothing. What what am I going to teach? What am I going to say to the bishop? That's going to be so different and so uh, this great uh, uh, revelation. No, it's not going to happen. So likewise, when, you're, when you've been in the truth for a while, you have to learn that you're, you're there to learn. Nothing more than that. Just learn and apply. How the bishop say? Study, pray, and apply. That's all you need to do. Read that scripture again. For when, for the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, uh-huh. which be the first principles of the oracle oracles of God Read. and are become such as have need of milk the basics matter of fact hold that it says uh, hold on finish that scripture it says in need of milk for the prince uh, and are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat hey make sure you, you relax over there officer all right give me <laughs> give me some rock three and start at verse 22 actually start at 21 read that real quick the book of Sirach, chapter 3, verse 21. So it says, uh, and are become as such as have need of milk. That's the basics of the scripture. Hold that. Give me first Peter 2 and 2 first. Then give me Sirach 3. Give me that first. And then give me Sirach 3. Let's get that milk. Seven seconds, officer. Come on. <laughs> I got Goodness. it. I got it. Come on. First Peter's. Chapter 2, verse 2. Read. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, uh-huh. that ye may be grown thereby. You see that? Desire the sincere milk of the word. That's the basics. So when you come into this truth, you need to be uh, uh, focusing on the milk. And when you think that you need that, and when you think you're ready to go out and teach, you need to go back to the milk again. Go back, stay, just continue to stay in a spirit, uh, a humble spirit of learning. Go to uh, Sirach 3 again, verse 21. The book of Sirach, chapter 3, verse 21. Read. Seek not out the things that are too hard for thee, uh-huh. neither search the things that are above thy strength. You read that again. Seek, read that again. Seek not out the things that are too hard for thee, uh-huh. neither search the things that are above thy strength. What, what's, in, what, what's heavy about that is once you've been in the truth and you've been, you know, you're just being patient, and you don't seek out the things that's too hard for you, like the scriptures say, you'll notice that every question that you have that you have, the bishop will go over it in the class. It's been so many times, I'm like, yo, what does this mean? You know what? I ain't, you know, I ain't gonna focus on it right now. It's, it might be above my, my strength at that point. So let me just wait. And I kid you not, it's been, I'm talking about since I've been in the truth, the next Sabbath or the Sabbath after, the bishop will do a class and go over that same thing I've been thinking of. That's letting you know. All you gotta do is just be patient. Just gotta be patient. Don't seek out the things that's too hard. Just study on the things that's gonna help you. Cause I, it doesn't matter how much you know about revelations when your wife don't listen to you. It don't matter how about Daniel's eleven. Literally, if you sleeping with a prostitute, I'm not, I'm, I'm, you gotta think about that. So you have to really consider. The basics, those things that's going to help you get by. Because when you're seeking things too high for you, your focus on, is going to be on those things rather than the things that affect your life on a day-to-day basis. Read verse 21 again. Seek not out the things that are too hard for thee, neither search the things that are above thy strength. Uh-huh. But what is commanded of thee. What's commanded of us is the, we, the law. Read. Think thereupon with reverence. So have reverence. Of course, it's the whole word of God, obviously. But those laws that's going to get your life right. Think upon those things with reverence. What does reverence mean? Put, let's look up that definition. Let's get reverence. Let's get that definition real quick. So those things, it says, 
what is commanded upon thee, think thereupon with reverence. Uh, read that, uh, Amos. Verb. Uh, regard. You, I read both of them. Deep respect for someone or something. Uh huh. And then the second one is regard or treat with deep respect. So go to the uh, synonyms uh, for the second one. Second one, verb. Revere, respect, admire, think highly of, uh. Uh, appreciate, cherish, value, prize, look up to, worship. Uh, yeah. We ain't, Tre yeah, treasure. Yeah, so honor, love. Right? So go read that verse again, verse 22. So Rock chapter 3, verse 23, 2. But what is commanded thee, think thereupon with reverence. Uh -huh. For it is not needful for thee to see with thine eyes the things that are in secret. You see that? It's not needful for you to know certain things. It's not needful. When it's time for you to know it, you will know it. The Lord will make sure that you know and have exactly what you need. But it's not always the time for that. Read. Be not curious in unnecessary matters. Uh -huh. For more things are showed unto thee than men understand. What's heavy about that, too? is the fact that you can go out to Deuteronomy 28. You understanding Deuteronomy 28, understanding the audience, right, who was speaking, and what the topic of it was, that's more than probably 95% of the world. Nobody understands Deuteronomy 28 except us. We're the ones that go out and teach it, and those that repent, they go, oh, okay. So we are the Israelites due to Deuteronomy 28. If everybody understood it, well, why did your mom have the Bible for 37 years Boom. and she never told you anything about Deuteronomy 28? I'm talking about not even a fingerprint in her Bible. Your grandma got the Bible. She ain't never tell you nothing about Deuteronomy 28, did she? It's rare. I mean, it might have happened one or two times for some of y'all. But for the most part, for our entire nation, nobody told you what Deuteronomy 28 meant. I remember I was listening to... Um, uh, I think it was, this was years ago. This is actually before the truth, believe it or not. So, th before I was in the truth, um, it was a Ricky, no, not Ricky Smiley. What's his name? The other morning show. Steve Harvey morning show. And nephew Tommy. He was doing a, a thing about pastors, right? Joking about pastors. And uh, he was like, I ain't gonna go to no church where the pastor talk about Deuteronomy. Like, he was making a joke like that, like, dude, that's old, man. He, he's still an old pastor. We don't deal with them pastors that talk about dude, uh, Leviticus. Why are we going to them books? He's, this is what he said. So I know the thought isn't there to read that. A lot of the times, they don't even go to the Old Testament whatsoever. They start writing Matthew or maybe a uh, song. You can't forget Malachi where well, the man robbed God. So oh, they, yeah, yeah. They start yeah, Malachi. Yeah. But you know right. what's crazy about that? Mo the... Most of the signs that the Most High left behind is in Deuteronomy 28. Ooh, bring it so out. how could you ever figure out who you are when all the signs, most of the signs was left in Deuteronomy 28? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I mean, he made a joke like it was, I'm talking about he had a, a great laugh. And I didn't understand that. I'm like, all right, whatever. I wasn't even reading the Bible at that time. But it's, it's insane to think that. You know what I mean? That's the thought process of Christianity. They're not going to, to get hope from the script. They're not thinking on the things that with reverence. Those, you know, the laws, uh, the Torah, those things you need to know about. How are you going? You can't, you literally cannot understand the New Testament without studying the old. It's impossible. Go ahead, yes, you want to say? I was just going to say, even in uh, Romans 15 and 4, right. it says, remember the things that was before. Exactly. Right? Exactly. So even the New Testament tell you, you got to go back. Yep. I'm still on, 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 on this subject. Because I, I know we're dealing with it, uh, fixing yourself. Yeah. This scripture, when it talks about in Surah 3, can also apply to marriages too. Mm. It can apply to marriages too. It says, seek not out the things that are too hard for thee. When you get an order from your Lord, it's not your job to seek out your thoughts about behind it. Mm. Bring it up. You, 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 you're, you're now, you're stepping outside. You're not putting your role that God gave you in reverence. Mm -hmm. you're, not, you're not putting it in reverence. You're not admiring your, your role. Because it says up a up above in verse 23, be not curious in unnecessary matters, for more things are shown unto thee than men understand. You sisters, you know you got to put a dress on. Bring it out. You know you're not supposed to eat pork. You know Christ is black. So if you don't revere or reverence the role that God gave you, you know better than the prostitute or the woman that's in the church. Mm. You know better. And men too. Watch this. So go to Revelations 2 real quick. Switch it up a little bit. So Revelations 2, we're going to start at verse 4. Watch this. Revelation. One thing about it, when you come into this truth, uh, if you find yourself um, 
not not humbling down and, and being uh, a student and, and trying to stay as that student and learn and grow. Here's one of the things that Christ told uh, one of the churches, right? Revelations chapter 2, verse 4. Watch this. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Uh, right, uh, read verse 1 real quick. Revelation chapter 2, verse 1. Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things saith that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, mm -hmm. who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. Now we'll jump down. So it says the church of Ephesus. Jump down to verse 4. Verse 4. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen. So it says you have left your first love. You remember when you came in, right? We're talking about fixing yourself. You remember when you first came in and the only thing you ever wanted to do was watch a video. That's all you ever wanted to do. You, you, you probably ain't even eating. I got to watch this next video. I got to see. Oh, my goodness. I can't believe it. You calling your wife. You waking your kids up. It's 12. <laughs> you called your grandma. You ain't talked to her in 26 years. You done called. Hey, grandma, I done heard something crazy. You got to see this. Right? That's all you wanted to do. Right? Read it again. Read verse 24. Uh, verse 4 again. Verse 4. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee because thou hast left thy first love. What ends up happening is over time you stop caring as much. Right? You start turning away from the things that you used to hold on so dear to. You used to hold on tight. Right? Nobody could take that from you at the beginning. All you wanted to do was study. That's it. And then over time, you find yourself kind of falling back. That's, that's what the scripture said. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee because thou hast left thy first love. Read. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent. It says what? Remember, therefore, from whence they are fallen, uh -huh. and repent. And repent. Read. And do the first works. And do what? And do the first works. Do your first works. So when you find yourself slipping, right? It says a just man's going to fall. He falls seven times. So when you find yourself slipping, what you're going to have to do is what? Remember your first works. Remember how you were when you first came in and you first heard this truth. Bring back that fire. Because Bishop, you know, Bishop been in for 30 years. He said himself, it's been times where he had to ignite that fire. Because you, you what you don't want to do in the truth is just be going through the motions. Right? What you do, because you did that in the Christian church, and it got you absolutely nowhere. Probably had you a, a woman pastor in there. <laughs> Something crazy. Right? So you don't want to go through the motions in this truth. You want to make sure that you're doing what? You stand focused and remembering the first works. So as soon as you slip, man, I ain't, dang, I got to, let, let, let me go back to studying. Let me look at the basics again. Let me look at the precept list. Let me, let me go back and read uh, uh, the first five books. Let me make sure I'm focused on, the, let, me, let me get back to how I was when I was, when I first came in. That's how you're going to stay in this truth. Read verse five again. Verse five. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent. And do the first works. Do the first works, read. Or else I will come unto thee quickly. Or else, Christ, I'm going to come unto you quickly. And I will remove thy candlestick out of his place. He's going to remove your candlestick out of his place. Remove and the candlestick out of his place. Meaning what? He's going, you're going to be destroyed. You ain't getting the kingdom. So you got to remember your first works. All right? So don't. Don't get comfortable, right? What I mean by that is don't get uh, complacent in, in, to the point where I'm going to say this. If you find yourself, let's say you bro, you're a brother. Let's say you've been here for years and you find yourself still in that black shirt. Let's say you've been here five years, six years, and you still got a black shirt. You ain't fixing yourself. Nothing has changed. You're not remembering no first works. You, 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 know, you could care less. Because I know a lot of people say, oh, man, we not, I don't care about no rank or whatever. That's Satan, if you're saying that, because in 1 Timothy 3, what does it say? We desire the office of a bishop. That's a righteous thing to do. So if you're not desiring that, you want to stay in a black shirt, this is the Christian church to you. And Christ said he's going to remove your candlestick. Hmm. Give me Sirach 33, verse 17. You got to really consider that and think about, um, you got to be real, really, really uh, brutally honest with yourself. You got to, con exactly, consider your ways. 
You got to really think, okay, what, where am I at in this truth? And be real with yourself. In Christianity, you never had to examine yourself. So when you come here, you're going to have to do it 10 times harder. Why? Because for years you've been lying to yourself saying you're better than what you are. Go ahead. At camp tonight, we ran into um, Brother Reuben. He's on, he's, Brother Reuben. He's on, he's with the um, Yahshua Temple somewhere up in Denver or whatever. Right? Speak up. You he's, a, he's, with, he's with Yahshua Temple somewhere up in Denver. So Brother Reuben came over and talked to us tonight at the camp. And Brother Reuben said he's been in the truth for 30 years. Damn. Brother Reuben's still shaving. Brother Reuben ain't got no fringes on. 30 years. 30 years. Sheesh. 30 years. So when I sold this, you a good talker. You're not a good listener. Yeah. You, you, you don't listen. I, wanna, I wanted to say, <laughs> well, you don't listen to God. <laughs> right. God been, go ahead, Aaron. 30 years. 30 years. 30 years. So he had, a, he had an issue that was reading the King James Bible. I was like, so what does your Bible say? Does it say thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not kill? Mm. Say yeah, it says that. It says, so so that's King James. So that's a law, right? So does your Bible say you need to put on fringes? He's like, yeah, it says that. Is that well, what's the problem? Come that's on, what's... man. <laughs> so the, the problem with Reuben, Reuben, well, he was he was not congregating. Like I said, that school, that Yeshua Temple, is all the way up in Denver. He in Jacksonville. He's in Jacksonville. <laughs> so we were like, we got a school right down the right down the street, Reuben. And the first thing he says, I got something to do this Sabbath. Wow. So you know he ain't keeping no no Exactly. Laws. That might be the same issue we have with brothers that's been in here mm. for four or five years. Mm. Still wearing a black shirt. I, I, I the first thing they do is make excuses for not showing right. up on the Sabbath. Bring it right. out. I guarantee, brothers, if they was in high school or middle school, I guarantee you'll do your push-ups, your sit-ups, you'll run the sprints, so you won't be on the bench. Mm. Everybody, everybody from the hood said, well, you know what? The way to get out the hood is get that scholarship. Put this ball in your hand and put the ball in your crib. And you you train it during the off season when it ain't got nothing to do with it. Damn. You want to be training the off season for Men of Valor. Damn. And 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 the thing about that with Men of Valor, that's your key for going out and teaching your people. You, you, win the whole you literally you have to go through that to be able to go out and teach your people in a righteous manner. So you're gonna bypass all that and just not even bypass it. You're going to say, to hell with it. I'm going to stay in this black shirt. So not only are you not fixing yourself, you not even you don't even have the spirit enough to go and try to fix your people. I'm going to write off the works of others. That don't make no sense. Watch this. Give the me book this. of Sirach, chapter 33, verse 17. Read. Consider that I labor not for myself only. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Read that again. Consider that I labor not for myself only. So and think about that. If you can... Another way of fixing yourself is is literally um, considering your brothers and sisters as well, because you know I know I'm the example, right? You know you're an example. You know you're an example. So I'm gonna consider, okay, my studying, making sure I walk in the right spirit. Not only is gonna save my soul, but it it'll give somebody else hope to know that they can do it themselves. So it it you fixing yourself and helping yourself is literally gonna help your nation. Read according to the scripture. Read it again. Consider that I labor not for myself only, but for all them that seek learning. For all them that seek learning. It is a lot of brothers and sisters that seek learning. I, um, I, I, we see a lot of messages from, let's use Clubhouse, right? We see a lot of messages from people actually uh, uh, sending uh, 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 DMs to the captains, to the deacons, about actually going to the school because they couldn't believe what they heard, right? Think about the late nights on Clubhouse. Think about how late the deacons and the captains are on till 3, 4 in the morning sometimes. But maybe even later. 7 in the, yeah, all night going scripture for scripture for scripture. They're not doing that for themselves. Who do you think they're doing it for? They're doing it for their people. But guess what? At the same time, it's sharpening their own sword. At the same time, it's building their own faith. Why? Because they're watching the scriptures come to life. I'm reading this scripture, and this person just repented, another person. Wow, another person just repented. So what that means is what, I'm, what we're reading is true. It's, actually, it's true. That builds your faith in, in the same process. So you're fixing yourself, and you're helping your brother at the same time. Huh. Read, read it again. You got something? Go ahead. Uh, just with this uh, Sirach right here, because I was thinking about what you were saying, right? And... Um, 
uh, going back to the revelation that you read, mm -hmm. when it says, I remember your first works. Because remember, like, when, when we come into the truth, right, and we heard the truth, you remember that feeling that yes. you got? Yes. And, like, because those men that was, whatever the YouTube video, whatever the street teaching, whatever the uh, flyer that you collected, somebody either folded that flyer, edited that, that video, or, or whatever you saw. It. Bring it out. So they sacrificed some time for you. But you're going to take that and keep it to yourself. You're selfish. Damn. You're selfish. Damn. That's heavy when you think when you think about that. Somebody did fold that flyer. Somebody did edit that video before you was even thinking about the truth. Mm. Donated the arms to print the flyer. Right. Right. Absolutely. Wow. Give me Galatians 6. Galatians 6. He said, uh -oh. <laughs> Galatians 6, we're going to start at verse 1. Because it's about fixing yourself. Galatians what? chapter 6, verse 1. Read. Brethren. If a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such as one in the spirit of meekness. It says, ye which are spiritual, restore such as one in the spirit of, of meekness. We have to get to a point where we're able to uh, uplift our brothers and sisters. Now, here's the thing. This is what Jake could do, because Jake can be evil. They'll see that. It says, restore such and one, right? So if a brother's put out with another doctrine, we're supposed to restore such and one. That's not what that's talking about. <laughs> Right, right, exactly, because Romans 16, 17 says, have no fellowship. Don't deal with nobody that's doing that, to have another doctrine or coming with a, a heresy or something like that. So obviously it's talking about somebody that what? That, that stumbles. Remember, a just man falls? A just man falls? So when you see your brother being overtaken in a fault, it says, ye which are spiritual, restore such an one in the spirit of meekness. Our job is going to be trying to restore that spirit back to where they were. Our job is to help that person fix themselves, right? Why? Because if you're in the spirit, I mean, you're already fixing yourself. So when you see your brother fall, I'm going to look out for my brother and help him the same way that I've been helped, right? Read. Considering thyself. You're doing what? Considering thyself. You're considering yourself. Why? Lest thou also be tempted. You see that? So you're going to help your brother and, and, and be a, 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 a shoulder to lean on or whatever you want to call it. You're going to be, uh, 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 give me another example, a shoulder to lean on. Uh, 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 a life raft. Uh, yeah, a life raft for, for a your life brother raft. because guess what? That same temptation is coming to you. So you got to make sure that your spirit is right so you can help that brother or sister. All right, keep reading. Bear ye one another's burden. Wait a second. We got to do what? Bear ye one another's burden. This so so if, I'm a, if I'm an individual, like how can I do that? Uh oh, so if I'm not applying the scriptures of congregating, how can I do that? Hmm. All right. Yes, you want to say Amos? Go ahead. For those that think when somebody leave on a doctrine, did it say bear another another's doctrine? Bring it out. Or did it say bears? But you don't just fall into baptism, right? Bring it out. You, you don't just fall into Bring multiple wives. Bring it out. You know what I'm saying? Be, uh, so read verse two again. Bear ye one another's burdens. So you're going to have to bear each other's burdens. Read. And so fulfill the law of Christ. So fulfilling, you're going to fulfill the law of Christ. Why did Christ not bear our burdens? Did he not die for us? So you mean to tell me you see your brother fall and you can't go help this brother out? You're that self, like he said, you're that selfish? Keep reading. For if a man think himself to be something. Read this again. Read it again. For if a man think himself to be something. Uh -huh. When he is nothing. When he is what? When he is nothing. Uh -huh. He deceiveth himself. He says when you think you're something, when you are nothing, you ain't doing nothing but deceiving yourself. So much so that you're not only destroying yourself, but you're watching your brother or sister be destroyed as well. Because you're not willing to bear their burdens. Because you think you're higher or, or you know, you're better than this person. Remember, only reason we know each other is because of the Bible. So what that means is I have to apply what's written in there in every aspect of my life. So I have to be, I have to bear your burden because the scriptures told me to. Just like it said to congregate. Just like it said, all those different things. Because you know how I many, how many of y'all, y'all know, all, everybody done said this. I didn't hang out with this. I wasn't like this in the world. I wasn't like that in the world. None of that matters now. Why? Because we have the Bible right here. So you got to make sure that you're walking in what you're reading. 
That's how you're going to fix yourself. That's the only way you're going to do it because you're going to, if not, you're going to always have that thought of how you was in the world. Right? Read verse 3 again. Verse 3. But if a man think himself to be something when he is nothing, Read. he deceiveth himself. Read. But let every man prove his own work. Prove his what? His own work. His own work, read. And then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone uh -huh. and not in another. Right. He's proving his own work, read. For every man shall bear his own burden. So think about that. So once you're fixing yourself, you get yourself built up, right? You're helping your brothers out. You still got to understand you got to bear your own burden. You still got to You still got to go through whatever the Lord puts you through and it's true. You got to be built up enough to get through it, though. Read. Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teaches in all good things. Right. So give me Ephesians 4. Stand in that same vein, right? So it says, every man shall bear his own burden. But it also said in verse 2, bear ye one another's burden. So the Lord is giving you um, a, a cheat sheet on the test. On the test that you have, he's giving you a cheat sheet. Why am I saying that? Because he gives you all kind of different things for you to um, to help you along the way in your process of repenting. The thing is, sometimes we so hard-headed, we don't want to apply those things, right? Watch this. Give me Ecclesiastes 4, uh, verse 9. Ecclesiastes 4, verse 9. Ecclesiastes chapter 4 and verse 9. Read. Two are better than one. Read that again. Two are better than one. The Bible says two are better than one. So why in the hell are you trying to be by yourself? I, I don't understand that. If the Bible is telling you two are better than one, you'll be amazed how many people know they're an Israelite. I know I got to keep the commandments. I know Christ is black, but I ain't trying to, I ain't, I ain't trying to be up in that congregation. I ain't trying, I, I don't want nobody telling me what I need to do. Read the scripture again. Two are better than one. There's no way that you're going to fix yourself by yourself. If you stay just by yourself, it's impossible. Read it again. Two are better than one uh -huh. because they have a good reward for their labor. Read. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. Bear another's burdens. Right? So if I'm, think about that now. It said a just man is going to fall seven times. So you're going to fall. But if you're telling me I'm going to stay back, I don't want to deal with no congregation. When you fall, tell me who's lifting you up. <laughs> Hold on, say it on the mic. Hold on, say it on the mic. Satan. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, he always got your back. When you yeah. like <laughs> He's looking forward for you to be like that. He's hoping that you're saying, hey, I'm by my, no, no, I'm good. I'm on my own. I'm, I, hey, I can handle it. No, you cannot. How do I know you can't handle it? Because before you heard, or before you seen that class, before you got that flyer, before you did anything pertaining to this truth, you were keeping Christmas, birthdays, Thanksgiving, uh, uh, whatever. You might have been a, 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 a Buddhist. You might have been a monk with the little, you know, yellow and orange on, looking crazy, bald head. <laughs> but I'm, but think about what I'm saying. You, it's, it's, it, that, that's a, that's proof. <laughs> He's stupid. That's proof that what? You didn't know better by yourself. It's impossible because you was doing everything but what God told you to do when you was doing it on your own. Now when somebody's showing you the scriptures and showing you what's going on, now that's going to help you. You had that, that tool is better than one because somebody taught, he helped you. Somebody helped you. Read that again. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. Uh-huh. But woe to him that is alone. But when hold on, you gotta read it slower now. But destruction to him that is alone. I'm gonna say this again for the individualites. Destruction for him that is alone. Read. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth, for he has no, he has not another to help him. He doesn't have anybody there to help him up. He doesn't have a a, a system like how we have. At any moment, something happened to me, I know I got brothers that I can reach out to. At any moment, if I have an issue here in Jacksonville, and let's say I, 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 I don't know how I should handle this, I can call the captain immediately. I can call the deacons. I can call. We have people here to help us to make sure that we're okay. Not you. 
<laughs> you at the house. How can you fix yourself? That don't make no sense. If I'm, listen, when I was by myself, I was smoking weed. I was laying with all kind of women. I was doing anything that I wanted to do. That was, and nobody could tell me that I was wrong. So how could I change unless somebody can Unless the Lord had, didn't put, if he wouldn't have put the classroom, the, because uh, I, I saw it on YouTube. If the Lord wouldn't have had me just, because I'm looking, I'm going to be honest with you. At the time I found it, I was looking up Egyptology videos. I'm trying to be uh, Umar, or whatever his name is. I'm trying to be like this brother. Right, right. I'm being honest. On the, but look, but look though, on that right side where it say next video or suggested video, I seen a, 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 a camp, like an Israelite camp. I'm like, what is this? And I click on it, and now I'm here. All praise to the Lord. But think about what I'm saying. If the Lord, if if I, if it wasn't for the 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 uh, that safety net that we have. If it wasn't for the congregation, I would still be out there doing the same thing I was doing at first, which is death. I was actually killing myself. Keep reading. You have anything you want to say, Aaron? Oh, okay. Read, read uh, verse 10 again. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 10. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth. Read. For he has not another to help him, to help him up. Read. Again, if two lie together, then they have heat. But how can one be warm alone? You see that? It says if two lie together, then they have heat. I'm sure y'all have seen those movies when they freeze it. What, they, what do they always tell you to do? Huddle up. Huddle up. I, it was a story. Uh, I think I was watching a, um, like uh, one of the first. They was talking about the tabernacles that, that they had in New York, like the first one. Like, I think it was the bishop, and it was a couple captains and the deacons. And it was just them. They weren't even their families. This is when they first started keeping tabernacles. And I remember uh, uh, they were saying that they, you know, they never had, they didn't know what to expect. They didn't know what to do, right? You know what I'm talking about? That was at uh, FOT. I yeah. think the bishop was talking about Right, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And it was they, they didn't prepare at all. Right, <laughs> right. So, now, keep in mind, in New York, it's freezing. It's freezing, especially around that time. So he said they think about it, they have no um what do you say they had no heaters they didn't have no what you call them air mattresses so they just had a tent just a tent they are how to say it again <laughs> they sleeping on rocks they on think about that they on rocks yeah, and it, go ahead it sucks, it sucks all the heat out of your body it, hold right on, on say it again that. it sucks the ground sucks all the heat out your body so what he said what what uh, what what I think it was the bishop or somebody said that what they had to do to stay warm they had to huddle up. You, you, think about that. And, and I'm using that as an example to show you that, guess what? Without their brothers, that would have been a terrible night. You understand? It's kind of odd that Bishop be saying winter's coming and yeah. then brothers want to leave. Brothers want to leave the truth. They want to be on their own. He said, he's saying winter's coming. It's time for you to huddle up. Come together as a people. <laughs> Bring it out. Right. Go back. Go back. Uh, read, read verse 11 again. Verse 11. Again, if two lie together... Then they have heat. Uh huh. But how can one be warm alone? How? You can't be. Read. And if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him. You see how heavy that is? It's showing you the bond of brotherhood. It said one can can prevail over you. You you can lose if it's just you. But it says, read that part again. It says two shall what? And if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him. Read. And a threefold cord is not quickly broken. You see that? But as the more numbers you have, the less likely it is for you to fall out. It's a lot easier for you to withstand and fix yourself when you have a group of brothers with you. When you have a congregation, when you have a, a, a foundation that's rooted in Christ. Everybody you know, we try to keep the commandments. So guess what? When you're, when you're here, if I see a spirit on you, I'm going to say something to you. Why? Because I actually care. I want to see you fix yourself. You're not going to get that on, uh, on your computer screen. I, I, we don't know you. So we can't fix you if we don't know who you are. I don't know your spirit. I've never seen your spirit. But here, when you're doing what? When you're, when you're at, with your brothers, if I see you, hey, man. And, and it, I'm not talking about just leadership. I'm talking about even your brothers that's in the congregation. They can see, hey, something's off with this brother, man. He's always usually uh, uh, has an upbeat spirit. He's a little bit more, you know, uh, he loves being around, loves talking. He loves being around his brothers. 
Now all of a sudden, the last couple of weeks, he ain't really talking that much. Something's wrong. So you're gonna go and say, hey, bro, you all right? What's going on with you? Something you need to talk about? You wanna go to, you know, you might want to go to leadership, or you know, we here for you, bro. You don't get that by yourself. So you're not fixing, you're not gonna be able to change it. You're not gonna be able to change it. Go to Hebrews 10, verse 25. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25. Read. Not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together. So we can't forsake the assembling of ourselves together. Read. As the manner of some is. Right. But exhorting one another. We do what? Exhorting one another. We have to exhort one another. We have to exhort one another. Read. And so much the more. As you see the days approaching. You see the end coming. You see what, what day we talk about. We understand that it's almost over. And you mean to tell me that you're not going to congregate because you don't want somebody to tell you what to do, but yet every single one of them got a job? Understand what I'm saying? You an employee. And let's say you got your own business. You still got to go to who? You can't avoid it. No matter what, you can't avoid you paying your Exactly, you paying your taxes. So you got to go to your enemy. You'll listen to them. But you won't listen to a brother that's reading, that look like you, that's coming out of the word of God. You crazy. You crazy. There, and, that, and at that instant, that spirit could care less about fixing themselves. But our goal is to do what? Get ourselves right and get prepared. Because we see the day approaching. Watch this. Give me uh, Hebrews 3.13. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 13. You got to really understand that this is the time to really be examining yourself and getting your spirit right, getting your mind right. Because if and I, I tell brothers all the time, at least consider your brother, if, if anything, right? If you, if you ain't going to do it for yourself, at least consider this brother. Don't, these, these brothers out here, these sisters out here, they don't know Deuteronomy 28. They, don't, they still think Christ is a white man. Most of the world still think Christ is white. So we got a lot of work to do. At least consider them. That at least put you in the right mindset to go, okay, I can do this for myself. I can, I can fix myself. Watch this. Read that. Hebrews Start chapter. Start at verse 12. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 12. Take heed, brethren. So take heed. Listen. Read. Brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief. An evil heart of unbelief. Now, I don't want, I don't want to deal with this Bible, man. I don't want to deal with these brothers, man. That's an evil heart. Read. In departing from the living God. Read. But exhort one another daily. Hold on. Do what? But exhort one another daily. Exhort one another daily. That's the power of your brotherhood and power of congregating. Not forsaking the assembly. Now I can exhort you daily. Every time I see you. Hey, shalom, bro. Most high Christ bless. You all right? It makes it easy. I'm going to tell you something. I guarantee you, when you, at, when you by yourself, you might have thoughts of sin. When you're around your brothers, I'd say 10 times out of 10, you ain't thinking about no damn sin. If you're in righteousness. When you're around your brothers, all those problems, all those thoughts, that's going out the window. It's going out the window. But as soon as you stand by yourself, hmm, you find yourself falling and falling and falling. That's why you need to make sure you try to be at the school as much as possible. This school is open seven days a week, all praise to the Lord. Make sure that you putting your brick in, doing what you can at your respective schools. Make sure you're doing what you can because guess what? When you're around your brothers, you're not thinking about sin. You ain't thinking about that big booty sister. You ain't thinking about uh, sisters. You ain't thinking about the the, uh, the 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 diesel brother at work. Yeah, yeah. You ain't thinking about that brother, Jerome. Yeah, why? Yeah, you gotta be Tyrone or Jerome or something. Why? <laughs> you ain't thinking about that brother, right? What you doing? You you at the school? You trying to get your spirit right? That's why it says don't forsake the assembly. Go ahead. Hey, I'm going to use me and you as an example. Yeah. All uh, right. If two days go by yeah. with, without me and you speaking, yeah. I'm already thinking something ain't right. Exactly. This brother right. ain't called me. If it's the second day, I'm like, ah, oh, something ain't right. I got to call this brother, <laughs> man. Make sure he's straight. Two yeah. days now, because we literally talk almost every day, yeah. multiple times a day. Yeah. That's exhorting one another every single day. You brothers got to do the same thing. You got to talk to someone. Go ahead. Go ahead, Aaron. Yes. Go ahead. Go ahead. Let me speak up. Yeah, so um, you're exhorting one another, uh, one another daily. So you're exhorting one another daily. You, scriptures are coming out usually. 
So, because if you see a brother come in and he's in, he's in um he's not actually right, or they might be a little off, or you've seen them that they turn the other way, and they might not be doing um what they used to do. Like um they miss Sabbath now. You can tell them they don't ask questions no more when you mm, when they call you. Bring it out. It is uh, they call you and say I'm just checking in, stuff like that. I'm just checking in. So they, like, they turned it to a thing where they saying, "Hey, I'm just checking on you, officer." Yeah. What oh, the yeah. hell are you talking about? <laughs> you checking on me? Now. <laughs> you checking on me? You. <laughs> hey, <laughs> go ahead. Hey, that verse twelve. Crazy. Hey, read that verse twelve again. Hebrews twelve, three and twelve. Hebrews chapter three, verse twelve. Uh huh. Take heed, brethren, uh-huh. lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief. What was that again? An uh, evil heart of what? Of unbelief. So that means that's talking directly about your faith. That's talking about your faith. So if you, you got an evil heart of unbelief, that, that's literally telling you that your faith is slipping. So that's why you have to exhort one another daily. So when you exhort one another, it's not just, hey, good job, bro. It's like, hey, bro, what, what, the, what the heck you doing? What the, what the heck you been? Why, why we ain't seen you in a while? It's like, it's, it's been four days. I ain't seen you in four days. Like, like I'll see not said, this school's open seven days a week. So some of the brothers, they know what I'm talking about. I was like, I ain't seen you in like half the week, man. What's, what's going on? I used to see you all the time. Let me get one more, one more scripture, um, uh, Romans 10, 17. Romans 10, 17. Because it's your faith that's, that's gotten weak. You done ran into something, you done got bit by a video or something, and you ain't telling the brothers. So you're hiding, you hiding, you, uh, you hiding what you're thinking about from leadership or from those brothers that can actually help you out. Uh, Romans chapter 10, verse 17. Romans chapter 10, verse 17. Uh-huh. So then faith cometh by hearing. So you, 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 the only way you're going to keep hearing the scriptures is by exhorting one another daily. You got to be around the brothers and hear the scriptures all the time. Because when you're on your own, trying to do it on your own, sometimes you need a kick in the butt. Read it again. So then faith cometh by hearing. Uh huh. And hearing by the word of God. You got to be in this Bible every day. Just like it says in Joshua. Meditate on it daily, right? So if you can't do that on your own, if you ain't congregating, you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing with your brethren, then you're not moving. You're getting stagnant. And you're going you're gonna to start moving backwards. That's all. All right. All praises. Uh, go to uh, 1 Peter 5 and 8. 1 Peter 5 and 8. This thing is, I'm telling you, y'all, it, it, if you just apply the basic things, right? That's why I said this class is, we're going over basic scriptures. Everybody know these scriptures, but you got to apply them to help your life. I'm telling you, these things are, are what matter to save your soul. You got to fix yourself. You have to because we all, all of us are sick. This is the hospital. This is the hospital. And we all trying to, we, we getting our medicine from our leadership. They're showing us what to do. It's just, they're, they're prescribing the right scripture or the right script for us to make sure that we got what we need. It, it, it behooves you to listen to that. What would you say? <laughs> right, right, right. Uh, give me First Peter chapter 5, verse 8. First Peter chapter 5, verse 8. Uh-huh. Be sober. Be vigilant. Hold on. Read that first part again. Be sober. Be sober. Be sober. That's for the brothers that like to smoke. I know some of y'all still smoking. Be sober. Be sober. Repent of that thing. Repent. All right, go ahead. Be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. You see that? It says your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. So what that means is Satan is literally waiting for you to say, ah, I think I know better. I don't, I don't need to go to the Sabbath this week. I can miss, I can miss this week. I'll be at home. Satan like, yes, I got it. Here we go. All right, he stayed this one time. Maybe I can get him to stay one more week. Let me, just, oh, okay. All right. Now he's he arguing with his wife now. Okay, here we go. Here we go. His wife ain't listening. All right, cool. Now he's ready to be taken. He's seeking, he's waiting for you to make one mistake. So think about that. Remember, Sirach 2, go to Sirach 2 real quick. Sirach 2, real fast. We're coming right back with Sirach 2. Start at verse 1. The book of Sirach, chapter 2, verse 1. Read. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, uh-huh. prepare thy soul for temptation. Read. Set thy heart aright and constantly endure. And constantly endure. Read. And make not haste in the time of trouble. And make not haste in the time of trouble. So go back to 1 Peter 5. Make not haste in time of trouble. So you got to understand something. When you first read that, read that scripture 5 and 8 again. 
uh, First Peter chapter five verse eight. Read, read, read. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. You didn't get on on Satan's radar until you start keeping the commandments. He wasn't trying to devour you. He already had you. He already had you. So as soon as you come into this truth, that's why it says prepare your soul for temptation. He goes, wait, okay. I think I got it. He don't want to sit. He don't want to congregate. This. He got offended. He got offended. Yes, yes. He ain't applied Matthew 18. I got him. He waiting for you. He waiting. See, that's why I said when you come into this truth, prepare your soul for temptation. Those trials are coming. Y'all seen the class, uh, Bishop's class, three trials of faith. So it come from your wife. It's going to either come from within you or it's going to come within the congregation. It's coming from any of those angles. And guess what? If you're not preparing yourself, if you don't understand Sirach 2, if you don't understand that you got to be ready for those things, Satan got you. He can't wait for you to make. As soon as you slip. That's why when you notice uh, uh, leadership always say they don't, they, uh, it's hard to trust a brother if he ain't been through no trial. It's very hard because that spirit change when, 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 that, when Satan trying to get you. When he got you, when, he, when you fall and you slip, we see what you made of then if you get back up like the just man does, right? We see, okay, this brother, all right, okay, he's solid. He done been through a lot of stuff. We can deal with him. That's why they say that because you got to understand you don't know somebody until that trial hit. That's why you got to prepare your soul for temptation because it's coming. And Satan, on a, he's literally in the bushes out there waiting. Like when we leave the school right here, he's behind the tree over there waiting. Did he? He mad right now. Somebody offended him. Yes. Dang, that sister, she said something to her she ain't like. Yes. I right, I'm going to wait about, about another two weeks. You walk out, you know that class is about you, right? Oh, bring it out. Bring you know, it out. That, you know that class is about you, right? Yeah. Go, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, stand up and say something. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. no. Don't say stand up and say, it'll say, tell that sister what you thought about, what she thought about the class. Did she think the same thing? See, what you do is you call... You bring up the class so they think he righteous, right? <laughs> and then you say, I really don't agree with that. Yeah, I don't like how Enoch was teaching that. Yeah. It was about you. You know it was about you, right? Mm, he did. Something ain't right. I, I, I always knew something wasn't right there. You always knew that? Okay. All right. <laughs> sure you did. You, you always knew something was off uh, of the leadership, but you never knew serving a tree was off. No. You never knew. Ooh, you 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 wait. always if something's wrong with us. Hold on, rap uh 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 uh. A rabbit, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. That was you good. You never knew nothing was off, but you would eat pork and they can pour Pepsi on it and bugs come out. But yeah. you never knew oh, nothing no, was right. No. Now you you seen that today, didn't you? Man, you, uh, you said the other day, didn't you? <laughs> I'm praying to the Father. <laughs> hey, yeah. <laughs> but 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 think about what he's saying though. That's that's very true because you never thought it was wicked to celebrate your own birthday. You never thought that was wicked. Right. You got a cake, candles, and uh, all kind of wishes. That's what you do it every year. You, you, you don't even read that. That was okay, though, right? Okay. Watch this. Give me uh, give me Mark 4. And start at verse 18. The book of Mark, chapter 4. Verse 18. Read that. And these are they which are sown among the thorns. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Read it again from the top. Verse 18. Uh -huh. So and, he's talking about the, the, the four types of Israelites, right? Watch this. And these are they which are sown among the thorns, uh -huh. such as hear the word and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of the other things. And, and the lust of other things. So deceitfulness, it says the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things, read. Entering, entering in, uh -huh. choke the word, and becometh unfruitful. So you can't fix yourself if your uh, objective is to prosper in this world. I'm not saying you can't get a job and make it. That's not what I'm saying. But if here's what I'm saying. I'll show you. Go to um, uh, Matthew 6. Give me Matthew 6. I'll show you. Matthew 6, verse 19. I'll show you what I mean by that. The book of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 19. Read. Lay not up for yourselves treasure upon earth, where moth and rust does corrupt. Read. And where thieves break through and steal. Uh -huh. But lay up for yourself treasures in heaven. So your treasures are supposed to be in the kingdom. 
that's where your treasure is supposed to be, getting up out of this captivity. It, it doesn't make sense to give more effort to a place where even if you become a billionaire, you're still in slavery. That makes no sense. I'm going to be the richest person on earth, and I'm still going to have to serve Esau. That don't make What? Why, why put all your effort into it like that? What I mean, your effort should be in the kingdom. Let me go out and teach. Let me go out and wake up my people. Let me do what God told me to do. Let me keep these commandments because I know then I'm going to have dominion over everything and everybody. But if I'm a billionaire in the world right now, I still have to pay taxes and serve somebody who hate me. Hmm. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> Absolutely. So read verse 20 again. Verse 20, but lay up for yourself treasures in heaven uh -huh. where neither moth nor rust does corrupt Three. and where thieves do not break through nor steal. They can't steal the kingdom from you. They can't take it. Only, only way the kingdom is, is, is taken is by your own uh, 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 failure, your own um, actions, right? By you falling and quitting, being the wicked that don't, fall, that don't get back up. Read. For, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. You see, so that's what it's saying, right? Wherever your treasure is, that's where your mind is going to be. If my treasure is the kingdom, everything I'm going to do is for the truth. That doesn't mean I'm going to neglect my life, but the cares of the world can't be the thing that, that overpowers my treasure, which is the kingdom. Go back to Mark 4, read verse eight, uh, 19 again. Mark chapter 4, verse 19. Read. And the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of the other things entering in, uh -huh. choke the word, and it becometh unfruitful. It chokes the word, and it becometh unfruitful. When you're focused on uh, fixing the things in the world rather than fixing yourself in its truth. Fix yourself. Fix yourself. We can't say it enough. You got to really consider and think about the things that you deal with personally and figure out how to get past them. Because every single one of us are going through something. And some of us have made it past Certain things only to find on that other end something else. You're going to go through trials literally until you die or Christ return, whichever happens first. You, and there's nothing you can do about it. So you, what you're going to have to do is build your spirit up enough and expect the, listen, I, I, hey, I expect the worst, hope for the best. Always prepare your mind for anything that can, this is a test from the Lord. This happened because of uh, 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 something I might have done in the past. So let me just make sure I'm, let me, let me stay focused. Let me not fall out. Let me not fall to this. Let me make sure that I'm doing what I can to move forward. Give me Philippians 3, verse 13. Watch this. Philippians chapter 3, verse 13. The book of Philippians chapter 3, verse 13. Three. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, mm -hmm. but this one thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind. We're doing what? Forgetting those things which are behind. One of the main ways to fix yourself is to let go of the baggage. You can't be Erica Badu in the truth. You can't be the bag lady. You, you understand what I'm saying? I know that sounds crazy, but that's, that's, that's truth. You can't have all this extra baggage. I'm talking about even when you, let's say even when you've been in the truth for a while, you make mistakes. It's done. You repent from that thing. Don't hold on to it. Read. And reaching forth unto those things which are before. So you're reaching forward to the things that are before. It's that kingdom that we was reading about. Right? Read. I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. So we press toward the mark. So our goal is always to keep moving forward. Always move forward. No matter what, what's going on. We got to move forward past what we're dealing with. That's how you fix yourself. Let me not hold on to things. Y'all seen the classes when Bishop talk about sisters, talking about they were raped when they were three, and she's 52. What? And now, of course, that's, we're not saying that that's right. Don't, come on. But you got to move on is what we're saying. You got to move forward. So think about that even in this truth. You've only been here for a while, and you've offended somebody, or you was offended, or whatever. You guess what? You 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 fix it with your brother. You repent and you keep moving forward. Stop holding on to oh leadership did this or this person did this. You're not getting it. You're not under, You're not fixing yourself. The old man is still there. Go ahead. You know what I'm saying? You know people do that. 
like I, I hear uh, leadership say this a lot of times. They come into IUIC and think there's no problems. They never realize SWAT to their sales. They don't realize this is a hospital. Right. So they come in here and thinking everybody is just perfect. Yeah, right. like like yeah. you don't understand when you come into this truth, your spirits really come out of who you are. And the church is covered up. It's covered up by three piece suits, money, and shouting and singing. There ain't no shouting and singing in here. So you're gonna be able to know really what people's about. And some people may offend and you may offend. Yep. No, scripture says offenses must come. So that it, you can't avoid that. But you gotta make sure you're doing what? Pressing forward toward the mark, right? Give me uh second Edges 14, 14. Second Edges 14, verse 14. Again, it's about fixing yourself. And 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 we can bring out classes like this because we're fixing ourselves too. Some are a little bit further than others. But it's about getting yourself right. Our only job is to be prepared for Christ, man. We got to be prepared when he come back. We got to go out and teach our people. We got to keep the commandments. Those are the things that we know that's going to get us there. At least you know. Hold on. Don't give, uh, uh, Go to Baruch real quick. We're going back to that second entrance. Go to Baruch. Uh, uh, what is one of my favorite scriptures? I love this scripture. Go to Baruch chapter 4, verse 4. Baruch. 4, verse 4. Baruch, chapter 4, verse 4. Uh-huh. O Israel, happy are we, uh -huh. for things that are pleasing to God are made known unto us. We know what pleases the Lord. We know what we have to do to get the kingdom because he told us. Your father that, who created heaven and earth told you exactly what you got to do to make him happy. So you can win. The game. He said, this how you win the game, son, daughter. This how you do it. It's a I'm gonna, fight. I'm gonna, and then the thing is, it was so heavy about it. He 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 uh, gated it behind you having to keep the commandments, so everybody can't understand what makes them happy. Only you can. He made it to where you can make them happy, just for you. And you know, this all I have to do to make the the, the Creator of heaven and earth very happy about me, and get the kingdom. You got a chance. You just got to apply it. You got to fix yourself. Go back to 2nd Ezra 14, 14. 2nd Ezra chapter 14, verse 14. Let go from the mortal thoughts. Read that again. Let go from the mortal thoughts. The Bible says let go of those mortal thoughts. Those things, because the, the more, most of the time your thoughts, if it's not some offense or you being childish or, or uh, I guess, emotional in the truth, all your thoughts are based on your bills, uh, whatever those things, you know, trying to get your, your, your new car, your house, your, all those things, are that's what your thoughts are on. Your thoughts are on the things that please God, right? You got to remember that. Let go of those mortal thoughts. Again, I'm not saying don't go for a house or don't go for a car. Don't go. That's not what I'm saying. But you're, you should let go of those thoughts if it's distracting you from the things that the Lord already told you, the things that's pleasing to him. Read it again. Let go from the mortal thoughts. Uh -huh. Cast away the burdens of man. Uh -huh. Put off now the weak nature. The Bible says that's a weak nature. So put off that weakness. Put off that weakness. If it's pleasing to the Lord for me to, like it said, get that in James. Get that in James. Get that in James. It says James 5 and 20. This is something that's pleasing to God. And also will help fix you. <laughs> right? Watch this. James 5 and 20. Remember, we're trying to fix ourselves. Yeah. This yours? All right, watch this. James chapter 5, verse 20. Let him know that he which is which is co covereth the oh, wait, wait. Whoa. All Excuse right, me. Start over. Right. Let him know that he which converteth the sinner from the error of his ways uh -huh. shall save a soul from death. So you're going to save a soul from death, read, and shall hide a multitude of sins. And at the same time, you're fixing yourself and saving yourself. So if I'm going out to teach and I'm doing, a, if my thought process is on doing the work and pleasing the Lord, there's no way I'm going to fall. There's no way. Because he's just said, if you go out and teach and you save a sinner, one of your brothers or sisters from their sin, he said, not only did you just save that soul from death, but you just erased a multitude of your own sins. I don't know about y'all, but I, I I would love to, to have a multitude all my, my sins wiped away. So if you stay uh, a black shirt, ah, there you go. so if you stay a black shirt, you, you obviously 
just want to heap sin and sin upon yourself, and you don't want to save your people. Oof. Goodness. That's what it's saying. Come you don't want to fix man. yourself, man. You want to fix yourself. You don't want to save others, and you don't want to fix yourself. Dang. You have now entered the Christian church. Sheesh. The most, the most high gave us a cheat code. Bring it and out. We, and we ain't using it. We're not using it. We'd, we'd, we'd rather come in here just like the Christian church, like, like the officer just said, and sit in the bike, even though there's a cheat code. It's like, you know you got to go to Camp 101. You know you got to join Men of Valor. You go out and teach your people. But you'd rather sit here and be a black shirt, sit in the bike. <laughs> you got a cheat code on how to get rid of some of your sins. It's like arms. A multitude. Like the scripture say, a multitude. You can get rid of all of it. Where we at? Uh, go back. What was we at? Second Ezra 14, 14? Read that verse one more time for me, uh, officer. Second Ezra chapter 14, verse 14. Yeah. Let go from the mortal thoughts. Uh -huh. Cast away the burdens of man. Uh -huh. Put off now the weak nature. Put off that weak nature. It doesn't suit you. It doesn't fit you well no more. You repent it. That weak nature ain't for you no more. Now it's time to step into that godhood. Now it's time for you to do what's pleasing to God. Give me... Uh, Give me Luke 9, 62. The book of Luke, chapter 9, verse 62. Yep. And Jesus said unto him, uh -huh. no man having put his hand to the plow and looking back. So no man having started the work, put his hand to the plow. Read. Is fit for the kingdom of God. If you're looking back, you're not fit for the kingdom. So he's already gave you what you need. He's saying if you look away from that, if you look back from that, then you're not fit. That's why it's very important that we prepare our spirits and we fix our spirits with those things that we deal with so that we're not always looking back, that we're not always trying to go uh, take steps back. Remember what we read in Philippians. We press toward the mark. We press toward the mark. We're always supposed to be moving forward in this truth. All praise to the Lord. We've seen our bishop do some things that's incredible. And it's been by, because he keeps moving forward. How many times have we heard him say, you know, the numbers, that, I'm not going to go into our numbers, but when he see Passover and all that, what do y'all say? That ain't enough. He said, that ain't that. No. So we, that's our example. He's always moving forward. He's always moving forward. So how we got so many people that ain't doing that? You not tuned in. You're not, you, you're not trying to do the same thing. I'm trying to do, I'm trying to move forward. I, listen. You're going to deal with offense. You're going to deal with a lot of things in this truth, especially for you brothers that's in leadership. You know what I'm talking about. You're going to deal with a lot of different things. But guess what? Your goal at all times is to fix yourself, help your brother, and just keep moving, man. Keep moving forward. All right? Give me 1 Corinthians 16 and 15. 1 Corinthians 16 and 15. We're going to have to move forward. We're going to have to um, learn how to keep pushing and follow the example of our leadership. You got to follow that example. 1 Corinthians 16, verse 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 15. Uh -huh. I beseech you, brethren, ye know the house of Stephanus, that it is the first fruit of Achaia, uh -huh. and that they have addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints. They did what? Addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints. You have to addict yourself to the ministry of the saints. A lot of our people are more addicted to money, uh, you know, material things, women, drugs. I mean, all kind of stuff. But you're not addicted to, to this ministry. This should be what you're thinking about. This should be what you, if, like, like I always say this, and if you look through your phone and you got all worldly things, numbers and family members in there, you ain't addicted to this truth. How could you be? If all your conversation is with people in the, of the world, you of the world. I look through my phone, all praise to the Lord, it's just, it's, it's, it's Israel. It should be like that for all of us. Why? Because if I'm talking to Officer Orm here, I know it's never going to be anything that's, um, that's of the world. It's always going to be something righteous that I'm going to get from that conversation. So you got to surround yourself with people that's going to give you the righteous understanding, righteous things. Go ahead. Amy. You know how brother, how you know a brother is addicted to the world when um, the first thing he looks at on the job application is the money, not can he have the Sabbath off. Mm. Like it's, it's about, okay, what's the salary? Not, 
not, because you that you can be scrolling on Indeed and it's not to be exactly what you want. Yep. And if they say some weekends, gone. Yep. Some week you may only one weekend out of the whole year, gone. Yep. Absolutely. I ain't doing it. Because that one can take you out. Bring it out. Bring it out. So go to, um, give me, so about fixing yourself, right? Give me Acts. Well, we, let me see. We got a couple minutes. I'm going to skip that. Go to 1 Corinthians 15 and 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 10. Uh -huh. But by grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain. It was not in vain. The grace that the Lord bestowed upon us is not in vain. Read. But I labor more abundantly than, than they all. Uh -huh. Yet not I, but the grace of God, which was with me. You see that? We have to thank the Lord for the grace that we have. The, the fact that he bestowed it upon you, it's not in vain. It's for you to actually put in a brick. It's for actually for you to move and put in works. Go above and beyond. Get the um, scripture where it says, uh, oh, Baruch 4.28. Give me that. Baruch 4.28. Baruch chapter 4 and verse 28. Baruch chapter 4 verse 28. <laughs> For as it was your mind to go astray from God, uh -huh. so being returned. So being returned. That's all of us. We were all re uh, returned because we all was doing something in the world that we weren't supposed to do. We was all in idolatry, breaking the commandments. He says, being returned, do what? Seek him ten times more. You're supposed to seek the Lord ten times more. You have an obligation to seek the Lord ten times more. You have to go harder for this truth. I'm going to tell you something. If you find yourself, if you, and a lot of y'all know this about yourself. If you know that you went harder for Christianity than this truth, you got the damn devil on you. Think about what I'm saying. You got people, not only did they go harder for Christianity, they gave more money. They was there all day. Uh, uh, they was, uh, uh. You can't get $10 out of the brother now. <laughs> you can't get $10 Think about brother, out of He was doing the, uh, oh, the, the Holy Ghost stomp and them things. All this. <laughs> you understand? Hard them shake and do all this. I'm talking about brother in there sweating. He, he lost sweating. more weight. Hey. Listen, he's sweating in the church dancing. He can't. Oh, straight. The brother ain't even been to Camp 101 to sweat once. If you are, if you literally are doing more in Christianity, did more in Christianity than you do for this truth, you got to check your, you're not applying that scripture. Read the bottom part of that again. So being returned. So being returned. Seek him 10 times more. Seek him. <laughs> seek him 10 times more. Seek him. Yeah, y'all understand. You got to go above and beyond. You got to give me that. Where say you can never go far enough. It's uh ah, where is it? Where is it? You can never go far. Even, it's in like thirty-seven or something like that. Sirach forty-three. Okay, give me Sirach forty-three, verse thirty. The book yep, of Sirach. Absolutely. Good. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, read it. The book of Sirach, chapter forty-three, verse thirty. Read. When ye glory, glorify the Lord, exalt him as much as ye can. Exalt him as much as you possibly can. Seek him ten times more. Read. For even yet will he far exceed. How, he's already far exceeded. He already had the word here for you. He already you alive. He's already showed you that you're an Israelite. He told you what's pleasing to him. He's already went far above what you're going to do. Read. And when ye exalt him, put forth all your strength. Put forth everything that you have. Put forth everything that you have. Read. And be not weary, uh -huh. for ye can never go far enough. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Just say what you say. It, say it. That means the work never stops. It's impossible. It can never stop until Christ it's, returns. Say so you'll never go far. You can never do enough. You can't exceed what the Lord has already done. You can never. So it don't matter. Just give it. Just put your hand to the plow. And don't look back. Right? Watch this. Give me second Ezra. Uh, I'm a give me second Ezra 16, 76. Second Ezra. So we gotta fix ourselves, brothers and sisters. Second Ezra 16, uh 76. The book of Ezra, second Ezra, 
chapter 16, verse 76. Mm -hmm. And the guide of them who keep my commandments and precepts. Start at verse 74 for me. Verse 74. Hear, O ye my beloved, say of the Lord, behold, the days of trouble are at hand. Uh -huh. But I will deliver you from the same. Hold on. The Lord said he's going to do what? I will deliver you from the same. He's going to deliver us from that trouble, right? Read. Be ye not afraid. Don't be afraid, Israel. Read. Neither doubt, for God is your guide. Wait a second. What? Neither doubt, for God is your guide. So the creator of heaven and earth. I'm going to say it again. The creator of heaven and earth is your guide. He's making sure you're making. Remember it says uh, a man's steps are uh, ordered by the Lord. I know I kind of butchered that. But uh, you know what I'm saying. You had to laugh. I butchered it. I know. But. A uh, man's goings of the Lord. That's what it is. So, so you got to understand that the Lord is truly your God. He really is. That's why you're here. Remember, you didn't choose him. He chose you. He chose you. You didn't. Listen, nobody in here thought that there was going to be. In, if somebody would have told them every every Sabbath, they be uh, for some of y'all, you be keeping the commandments. You ain't, you know, you ain't going to the club. You ain't. Somebody would have told you that 10 years, 20 years ago. He was like, man, please. Reading the Bible? Please. You never would have thought that. So you know that the Lord is your guide because not only are you in the, the greatest, this is the greatest time to be alive. Not only are you in the greatest time to be alive, he's giving you a a, 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 a front row seat. A get out of jail free card. Yes. He's, he's giving you a, a fireproof yes. Uh, <laughs> a fireproof outfit, yeah, a whole, suit. Yeah, a whole, a whole suit. armor, a whole armor, for when nukes come. You you know this place is gonna burn. He said, "I got you. Don't worry about it." He's your guide. Read verse. We gotta hurry up. Uh, read seventy six. Seventy six, and the guide of them who keep my commandments and precepts, save the Lord God. Let not your sins weigh you down. So if God is your guide. Don't let your sins weigh you down, right? You press forward. Don't look back. Repent. Keep it moving. That's how you're going to fix yourself. Read. And let not your iniquity lift up themselves. Don't let your sin lift up. Because a lot of times if you think on it too much, it's going to destroy you. Read. Woe be unto them that are bound with their sins. Destruction if you're caught up in it, right? If you're just hanging on to it and holding on to it. Read. And covered with their iniquity, uh -huh. like as a field is covered over with bushes, uh -huh. and as the path thereof covered with thorns, that no man may travel through. Read. It is left undressed, uh -huh. and it is cast into the fire to be consumed you therewith. See that? So if you don't fix that and, and, and move forward and get past it, it says, it has, if it's left undressed, it is cast into the fire to be consumed. All right? So fix yourselves, Israel. Make sure that you're doing a thing, reading the, the, the scriptures, reading the basics, and make sure that you apply those things to help you, all right? We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.